Hi everyone, I have been working on a few videos and unfortunately for those videos, the Obsidian developers decide to drop version 0.8.1. It's actually a joke that they are calling this as just another minute point update. I think it is not only one of the biggest but one of the most monumental updates to Obsidian yet. I have been playing with its features for several hours now. Before I show you what's new, please bear in mind I will mostly be doing a comprehensive video going over some of these features. Today, I will go over them in brief. Let's first look at the new changes to search or rather the regular expressions in search. This will only be applicable from version 0.8.1 and above. As I had anticipated in my previous video, they've gone rid of the double backslashes. It is now the regular backslash command. How does this change things? Let's have a look at some of the examples as shown in the video, Obsidian basic search. If you haven't seen that video, There'll be a link for it above. I will go over these examples quickly as I have already explained the functionality and how it works in that video. The first example was to do's. To search for all the tasks that were incomplete, you had to put this command. However, that will not work anymore. Now you need to just add the slash to start the expression. Then like you use regex in other programs, just put hyphen space backslash square brackets open space backslash square bracket close to escape the square bracket as it's a special syntax in regex and finally a space and end it with a slash that will show you all your tasks across all files to see all the complete tasks we will add a lowercase and uppercase x in square bracket so that it's not case specific and as you can see we can now see all the complete tasks Finally, we'll add a space in the square brackets and it'll show us all the completed as well as incomplete tasks. Again, just to get you comfortable with the syntax, anything inside square brackets will be matched in search. Similarly, if I want to see all the dollar amount in notes, I will now type slash for telling Obsidian I'm using a regular expression, then backslash dollar sign. You might be wondering why the backslash before the dollar sign. It's a special character and it needs to be escaped, but I haven't told you what it does. Well, if you remember in the previous video, I had specified that regular expressions have anchors as well and 0.8.0 didn't support them. Now they do. I will dive deeper into it right after these examples. So continuing forward, after the dollar sign, I will add a backslash again and then D to define digits. Remember lowercase t. If you remember for our example, we had used $25, $36 and $125. So the maximum amount was $125, which is three digits. So we will define a range from one to three. To do that, we will open curly braces and first put our minimum amount, which in our case can be two, but we will use one and then we'll put the maximum digits, which in this case is three, then close the curly braces and add a slash. As you can see, all our values are now visible. Then was the phone example, which for the sake of time, we'll copy paste. I had shown two methods of accomplishing this. The first was this. Here, we'll get rid of all the double backslashes and make it single and it should work. Second option to accomplish this was this example. Here also, we will get rid of all the double backslashes and make it single, which will become this. Next was the email example. Here we will change just one double backslash to single. So just before dot com, where we are escaping dot from double backslash, we'll make it a single backslash. So it'll become this. Next was the URL example, which I will just copy paste again and it'll become this. We have to keep the backslash before the slash because that's a syntax for telling search in Obsidian that we are using regular expression. The final example was from my personal vault to get my sleep values. So let me open my personal vault. Now let me paste in the expression. This will now become this. Now let me quickly show you four new syntaxes called anchors, which will make search even more powerful. First is backslash B, which defines a word boundary. In simple terms, this command will specify that our word will begin with whatever comes after this. So if we type C, it will search for all words beginning with C. We can go more specific as well. 
Let's make it chart. As you can see, it will only search for that. Next, as you might have guessed, is backslash capital B, which defines not a word boundary. So let's change the case of this B and make it uppercased. And also change charts to C. We'll get all the words that have C inside them, but do not begin with C. Next, we will put the caret sign in between the slashes. This searches for beginning of a string. In simpler terms, say if you want to search for syntax on a new line, we will just use the caret sign. Let's use the URL example above. Let's search for URLs that begin on a new line. For that, we'll copy paste the example and just add a caret sign. As you can see, only the URL for this channel, which begins on a new line is highlighted. Finally, we will look at the opposite syntax. We use the dollar sign and it defines the end of a string. Let's search for data. I just want to see the results where data was in the end of the line. So I'll add slashes before and after data and after a add the dollar sign. As you can see, we can now only see results where data is at the end of the line. I'm sure you can now understand how powerful this addition can be. It will make searching for things a lot more easier. Now let's have a look at why I think this is one of the biggest updates and why I think it's funny that the developers are only naming it 0.8.1. The biggest and craziest feature is the addition of iframe HTML tags. What is this and why should you be excited? They've essentially managed to make Obsidian dynamic. For example, I'm sure you are seeing this YouTube video and wondering how have I added this to my note? It's because of this feature. Let me show you a few more examples in my personal world. Yes, I have Obsidian's roadmap running inside my daily note. Let's open the command palette and use a feature that had come with 0.8.0, which was the ability to jump to today's, tomorrow's or yesterday's note. Let's search for previous and click enter. In this example, I have a weather widget that I'm pulling from my website. The possibilities are endless. You can have Airtable, Google Maps, Google Sheets, or almost any web page you can think of running in this. How can you do that? I will show you the code shortly. The second addition is the ability to add HTML tags with style properties in a note. What this means is that you can completely style any element of a note. Unfortunately, due to some reason, all the styles I had applied disappeared. I have found a fix. So let me show you how to use it. Let's go back to today's daily note. Let me go to edit mode. This inline tag I've added fixes the problem. You should essentially just have to type this and it should work. In this example, we set orange as the color for heading one and red for table. Let me just walk through some other features and changes before I come to the final big feature. If you have the open with default plugin enabled, you will now be able to right click the file in file explorer and select show in folder option, which will open the system file manager and highlight the file. You can now scroll beyond the last line of the file. Graph view now has smoother fading animations when hovering with mouse. Finally, we come to the other huge feature that is the outline plugin. To activate it, click on settings, then plugin, and then we scroll down and activate the plugin. Outliner functions exactly like backlinks. You can access it from the sidebar here and see the outline of the file that is currently selected. Or you can also see the outline of each note by clicking more options and selecting open outline. This is a massive update and includes things I honestly didn't even realize I needed. I'll be redoing some of the videos that I was working on in light of this new update. I'm also going to make a video which explains how to use this palette using a program on Mac called Keyboard Maestro and share some of my templates. If you found this video helpful, then don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. I'd love to know what you think about this update. So please leave your comments and suggestions in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching.